Stephen King's stories have been turned into films and TV shows quite a lot, so often in fact that there's a whole Wikipedia page about it. And 2017 seems to be the year of the Stephen King adaptation, as this year alone, there are four movies and three TV shows based on his work that have either been released or are planned to be. Some have been critically acclaimed, some have been critically panned, and one in particular has received some mixed reactions. The Mist. This 10 episode drama, based loosely on the 1980 novella of the same name, follows the inhabitants of a small town in Maine that's enveloped by a supernatural mist full of monsters, and the various ways they try to survive. On the one hand, it presents us with an incredibly interesting and unique concept and pulls off some clever things with it, but at the same time, fills itself with bland characters and stories that just go nowhere. And it's why, in this episode of The Storyteller's Notebook, a series in which I analyze various storytelling techniques used by various creators and various mediums, I want to talk about the myths and the problems that can arise from creating an adaptation. And yes, spoilers ahead. Now, for as mediocre as I found the series to be, I would like to begin by at least pointing out some of the things the series actually does well. Such as the opening scene, which focuses on a soldier waking up in the middle of nowhere. It not only quickly and cleverly establishes his amnesia and his desire to remember who he is, but also creates an intriguing air of mystery. Why is he passed out in the middle of the woods? Why doesn't he remember anything? What is this mist? And more importantly, what in the hell is wandering around inside it? Sure, I still have some nitpicks about a few things here, but this first scene is a well-crafted hook that brings you in, before slowly and painfully dragging itself out by the end of the first episode. And although this mist may not be filled with alien creatures like in the novella, it still creates some pretty terrifying monstrosities for us to fawn over. Such as the Four Horsemen and the Mistwalker, I say because I don't know the actual name. These entities are horrifyingly fascinating, and their ominous presence is amplified by the distorted visual effects that are used to show the confusing and otherworldly nature of the mist. Though it may not be the same, the series still creates some disturbing creatures. Similarly, the story, though it diverges from the novella quite a bit and is quite... average, still presents us with some interesting ideas, like the amnesiac soldier trying to recover his memory, or the junkie trying to accept her past, or hell, even the big tough jock coming to terms with his sexuality. There are a lot of cool stories trying to bubble up to the surface of this show that are simply buried by the main plot, which, for the most part, felt like something ripped out of a daytime melodrama trying to be as shocking and convoluted as possible. And that's exactly the problem with this show. Alongside some more general problems like flat acting, questionable editing, and mismatched tones, it feels like it's trying to do too much at once. In the show, we follow three different plot lines, each of which has about three or four different perspective characters, which in total gives us ten individual story arcs to get through in just ten episodes. Which, even for a TV show, is a bit ridiculous. Especially when there's no central focus. Each story is given equal weight, which isn't helped by all the themes and topics they're trying to touch on. Like sex, sexuality, rape, family, parenthood, motherhood, fatherhood, teenagerhood if that's a word, teenage love, peer pressure, mental illness, the law, authority, religion, addiction, relationships, greed, power, the nature of good and evil, and the desperation for survival, all while trying to comment on societies, or at least the society of this small town of Maine's reactions to them. And the near incomprehensible phenomenon that is the mist. Compare this to the original's laser focus on family, religion, and the breakdown of society, and you'll notice the problem. By trying to cover so many stories and ideas, the series isn't able to develop or explore any of them properly, and leaves it feeling like a wasted opportunity. Now, it's understandable why they would change the plot and add so much, considering that the novella it's based on is only about 50,000 words long, which is just over half the length of a typical novel. For a movie that only lasts about an hour and a half to two hours, that's fine, but for a show that needs to stretch over ten, things have to change. However, it almost feels like it overcompensated for that lack of material and spread itself too thin. It doesn't help that the story of the people living in a small town hit with a supernatural phenomenon that disconnects them from the outside world feels like it's trying to be the mist without being the mist. And I think this basic idea is one of the biggest ways that adaptations manage to, and pardon my French, fuck up. They try and recreate their source material without actually understanding it, and end up creating an inferior version of it instead of something that should be able to stand alongside the original. Often they are made with little consideration given as to how to tell the story in a new medium, or if there is a new way to tell it. 
And while putting a story from a medium devoid of visuals into one that is almost entirely visual is interesting, simply turning a book into a movie isn't good enough if the new medium isn't taken advantage of. But that isn't to say adaptations are a bad thing. As I mentioned, adaptations can often be just as good or potentially better than the work they're based on. This is because the creators of said adaptations go out of their way to carefully consider how to tell these stories in a new medium, and how to make them feel fresh. This can range from, as I mentioned, taking advantage of the art of cinema to capture the imaginations of fans and newcomers alike, to taking a completely new look at the concept and exploring areas the original hadn't even considered. They don't just try to retell the same story, they try to tell it in a new way or with a new perspective. Take for example the 2007 film adaptation of The Mist. Though this movie certainly has its own flaws, it still brings something new to the table. Being made 27 years after the novella was originally published, the movie feels like a modern take on the story. And though it's more or less a word-for-word -word adaptation, its ending gives us a new way to look at things. Both have David, his son, and a group of survivors make their way out of the supermarket and drive off into the mist looking for an escape. In the novella, they eventually stop to rest and David, while flicking through the radio, hears a single word blurred out before it returns to static, giving us a message of hope. Showing how, no matter how dark and grim a situation may seem, there is always a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. But in the movie, they run out of gas, and they hear something let out a low roar nearby. David is forced to use the last of his bullets to put the others out of their misery before being eaten by whatever beast is lurking outside, and he heads out to face it, only to see that it's not a monster, it's the military. This ending reinforces the story's exploration of human nature and the extents to which we go in the name of survival, showing that even the most average of everymen can be driven to do horrible things when a situation becomes bad enough. It's a mind-blowing twist that also shows how one can create a great adaptation, by giving the audience a new perspective on the story while staying strict to the original. And I think there was a great way The Mist could have done this. Aside from cutting off a lot of the narrative fat, it lies in where they started and ended the series. The military. This aspect of the mist is something that is barely mentioned in the original novella and only relatively expanded upon in the film. And with the way the series is set it up with Jonah remembering that he was tortured, learning that he was a high ranking officer, and the series ending with a train car of prisoners being dumped into the mist to feed it, they could have made an intriguing narrative that explored the military's reaction to this phenomenon, and even dive into how the mist itself came into being through their experiments. And personally, I'd also leave Mia the drug addict in the story. As someone who seems to be desperate to run away from and forget her past, I think she'd act as a great foil to Jonah, who wants nothing more than to remember his. Hell, I can picture the synopsis now. A soldier with no idea who he is wakes up in the middle of nowhere as a strange mist full of horrific monsters envelops a small town in Maine. With the help of a junkie on the run, he slowly uncovers both the secrets of his past and the supernatural phenomenon they're trapped in. Simply by trimming itself down, picking a focus, and taking a look at something that was left unexplored in its source material, this series could have been a lot more interesting than it ended up being. Adaptations are a complicated beast to navigate, and although the mist shows us how it can go wrong, it can also get us to think about how to do them right. It's not good enough to simply transfer something to a new medium and recreate it. You need to think about how you can take advantage of said medium, new twists and perspectives to tell the story with, and exploring ideas that the source material barely covered. It may not work every time, but in my mind, the reward is worth it. After all, it's only by venturing into the murky unknown that you'll find something... interesting. And yeah, those are my thoughts. I thought The Mist was alright, I'm just disappointed by how much potential it wasted. I mean, I think they could have made the suck em all thing work, I just thought Jonah and Mia's stories were more interesting, you know? I'm also surprised by just how many goddamn Stephen King adaptations are coming out this year, like holy shit! Seven of his stories are getting adapted, technically eight if you count a straight to DVD sequel. It's ridiculous! Just pumping out the wazoo they are. Anyway, tell me what you think, where you agree, disagree, why you think of the Mist series, if you think Stephen King is overrated, etc. And thanks for watching. If you enjoy this and want to see more, and be sure to like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe to come fly with me. And hopefully, I'll see you later.